Hello and welcome. This three-part series of videos on the crystal chemistry of ionic materials provide an overview of the principles of ionic crystal structures and their representation using polyhedral models. In this first part, we'll begin with a short review of the cation sites and structures where the anions are close packed. We'll show how simple methods, such as radius ratio rules, are used to predict the location and the occupancy of the cations in the available interstitial sites, and explain how the structures of many materials can be successfully predicted just from knowing their chemical formulae. I hope you enjoy it. We'll begin with a brief overview of the basic principles of ionic structures and talk about the available interstices in a close packed anion arrangement and the filling of those interstices using radius ratio rules. Shown is a close packed layer of anions. As we stack close packed layers on top of each other, then we generate in between the layers holes or interstices, potential sites that a cation can occupy. So shown here is AB stacking of anions, and in between them, here are the interstices, labeled in blue are the octahedral holes. These holes then have six surrounding anion neighbors. And in the view shown, we can see these are the three anions above the cation site, these in red are the three anions below. And here on the left, I've just shown using a polyhedron that the cation, should it go in this position, would have octahedral six-fold coordination. Such a polyhedron is shown here. We'll get into this more later on. Also within the layer are a set of tetrahedral holes shown in green such that if a cation occupies this particular position, it would have four anion neighbors. Shown here is a polyhedral view of those environments, such that if the cation, shown in the middle of this tetrahedron, should occupy the hole, it would have the four anion neighbors. Here's a summary of the positions of the octahedral and tetrahedral sites within the close-packed arrangement. At the top, the octahedral holes in blue, and at the bottom, the tetrahedral holes. As we count sites, one thing we should remember is that per anion, there is one octahedral site or hole. Also, each anion generates two tetrahedral holes where a cation could potentially be located. If the anions were to repeat, in ABC, ABC type stacking, it is simpler to rotate the view and look at the face centered cubic unit cell repeat that results from this arrangement. In the rotated view, we see the repeat unit for this arrangement is a face centered cubic unit cell. Shown in red are the anions, and shown in green here are the octahedral positions, the holes, within that ABC anion packing arrangement. There is one octahedral hole for each anion. Because there are four anions per unit cell, then in total there are four octahedral sites per cell located halfway along these cell edges. And as we mentioned simultaneously, present within the cell are eight tetrahedral sites, two per anion. They're shown in green here. They all lie actually within the unit cell. And so each anion in this arrangement creates a total of one octahedral site, two tetrahedral sites. And therefore, if we add all of these up in one unit cell, we have four anions, 12 cation sites. To ascertain the filling of these sites by the cations, we use simple geometry and so-called radius ratio rules. From the geometry of the anion arrangement, the size of these holes can be calculated. Let's not go over the details here, but for a perfect fit of a cation into an octahedral site with that coordination number of six anions, the radius ratio which is the radius of the cation over the radius of the anion for that perfect fit, would have to be 0.414. 
Similarly, we can show the perfect fit of a cation into a tetrahedral site would be for a radius ratio of 0.225. Now by perfect fit, we mean that the ions go into these positions without disturbing the anions at all, and they would remain in close packing, which is not necessarily a good thing, because the anions actually repel each other. However, these radius ratio rules give us very useful ranges where we can predict which cation will go into which site. Between 0.225 and 0.414, we would predict tetrahedral coordination of the cation. And for 0.414 and higher, we would predict octahedral coordination of the cation. And so we have these ranges where we can start to make fairly reliable predictions. When we fill the sites, we do so in accordance with the radius ratio rules, but we also have to think about how many of those positions are filled, and there we'll be guided by the stoichiometry of the compound. So we know for these octahedral holes, we'll fill them if the radius ratio is 0.414 or greater. The tetrahedral holes, we would expect them to be occupied by a cation that has a radius ratio between 0.225 and 0.414. And as I just mentioned, how many of these positions are filled by a given cation is dictated by the stoichiometry of the compound. For example, let's look at the rock salt structure, which is the structure of sodium chloride, magnesium oxide, and many other AX type ionic compounds. And the unit cell is shown here, with the cations all occupying the octahedral positions. They occupy those positions because from the radii of sodium plus and chlorine minus, we establish that the radius ratio is 0.563. Thus, we would predict that sodium plus will be octahedral, surrounded by six chlorine anions. There are four chlorine anions per cell, one octahedral site per anion. And so from the stoichiometry, if we filled all of the octahedral sites, our cell contents would be Na4Cl4. And because the stoichiometry of our compound is Na1Cl1, then this 4 to 4 ratio is compatible with the stoichiometry of the compound, and therefore all of those cation sites will be filled. The length of the unit cell edge, A, is equal to twice the radius of a sodium cation plus twice the radius of a chlorine anion. That cell edge also is equal to two Na plus Cl minus bond lengths. Let us move to other cation occupancies when the anions are cubic close packed. So if we keep the anion packing ABC ABC, we know in the resultant unit cell there are always four anions per cell. We can now look at different potential fillings of the octahedral positions and the tetrahedral positions to predict the resultant stoichiometry of the ionic compound. We've already seen the first one, where I fill all of the octahedral positions, so I'd have four cations per cell. My resultant stoichiometry, M4X4, which is equal to Mx, and as we mentioned, that is the structure of sodium chloride. I could fill all of the tetrahedral positions. And if I did, I know I would have eight cations per cell. So my stoichiometry would be M8X4, which reduces to M2X. And this is actually the structure of K2O. Through this simple approach, then, we're starting to predict structures of known compounds, which, given its simplicity, is very useful. Going on, if we fill half the tetrahedral positions, stoichiometry is MX, we get the zinc blend structure. Or I could fill half of the octahedral positions, and I'd get the structure of cadmium chloride. Cadmium dichloride is an interesting case, because actually the octahedral sites within a given pair of anion layers are all filled, but the next sites between the next pair of anions are all empty. So I have filled, empty, filled, empty. As a result, this is effectively a two-dimensional compound because I have very strong bonding within the occupied layer, but between two occupied layers, and in, in here, there's nothing, and the attraction between the two is just through much weaker van der Waals forces. Another one is the spinel structure, magnesium aluminate. Don't be intimidated by this view, certainly not expected to know about the details, 
My point being that the structure is eminently predictable just from the stoichiometry, because in this case, 50% of the octahedral sites are filled. That's two cations per cell. One eighth of the tetrahedral positions are filled. One eighth of eight is one. And so our resultant stoichiometry is M3X4. Typically, the M cations are of different nature. One here is magnesium, the other is aluminum. And my ending formula is MgAl204, which is the spinel structure. I just note here that when I fill everything, a cation in all the octahedral sites, another cation in all of the tetrahedral sites, the cations are so close to each other that I get very strong repulsions. And in fact, there are no known examples of such a compound, but at least here I could predict the stoichiometry. Let's also talk about lithium cobalt oxide, which has a rock salt type structure. But in this compound, because there's two different cations with different charges and slightly different sizes, then they order into their own respective layers. And so I have a lithium layer, cobalt layer, lithium layer, cobalt layer, etc. And this layered ordering is very important for its applicability as a reversible cathode in rechargeable lithium batteries. We can also look at possible ionic structures where the anions are in hexagonal close packing, ABAB type stacking. Shown here is an example of such a structure. Here we can just look at the anions and see that they're in A, B, A, B, etc. stacking. Between them, these are the octahedral holes. If I fill them all, then I would get a structure which is called the nickel arsenide structure. Although the details of the stacking are different to the examples we've seen before, the number of sites generated per anion are the same. So each anion generates one octahedral site and two tetrahedral sites. Because there are two anions per unit cell, the total number of octahedral sites is two, and the total number of tetrahedral sites is four. And again, we can go through possible stoichiometries for different filling of the two positions. If all of the octahedral sites are filled, 100% here, the stoichiometry is M2X2, MX. Is there an example of this? Yes, it's the nickel arsenide structure. If I fill half of the tetrahedral sites, same principle as before, there are four total sites. I'm only filling half of them, i.e. two. My stoichiometry is MX. And this is the zinc sulfide wurtzite structure. Uh, we'll talk about this case in the second video. This is where I fill half of the octahedral positions. And so I have one cation per cell. My stoichiometry is MX2. And it's a well-known structure, the rutile structure, which is one of the forms of TiO2. Or if I fill two-thirds of the octahedral positions, that would mean I have four-thirds of cation per unit cell. Let's turn that into integer numbers. The chemical formula would be M2X3, and that is another well-known structure, the so-called corundum structure, which is the structure of Al2O3, so-called alumina. And we'll also talk about this in more detail in part two. And many of these compounds are important ceramics. Now we've gone over the basic principles of filling octahedral and tetrahedral sites. Let's look at some slightly more complex oxides and how we can represent them using polyhedral models. And we'll do that in the second video.